Looks like we've come to the end of the road. There's no point in running away now. I try hey guys and girls, what's going on? Josh back here with JR's Tool Talk. So today. If you're getting into metalworking or you are into metalworking, I think this one will be really good for you. This is 15 tools that I believe every metalworker needs. I hope you all enjoy the video. This was surely a hard one with only being able to pick 15 of the most useful and critical tools to the job. But here goes. There are tools on here that you will need. And there are tools on here other blacksmiths, fabricators needs that I don't have but would like. A milling machine, a swage block, a power hammer, a brake and a lathe but now that's just not a possibility so let's get to what most metal workers need from the tools that I do currently have a lot of these tools are universal across most occupations that need tools to work but today we'll be talking about their use in metal working it goes without saying but always wear your PPE and I shouldn't have to tell you to wear a respirator glasses jacket and an apron but wear them let's start with cutting there are two in this list that I find critical. I mean a bandsaw and a chop saw is nice and it is useful, just shame my old one wasn't. So my main two picks are my trusty old angle grinder with a cutting wheel and my plasma cutter. An angle grinder will allow to cut almost any size material you need. Granted you have a big enough wheel. It might not be the quickest or the cleanest but it does have its purpose in my shop. It is used to cut pretty much anything up to 30mm round ready to be welded shaped cold or forged or ground although in the past i have used it to cut 20 mil by six inch with a four and a half inch grinder so they really can be there to help you in a situation when there's nothing else on hand there is endless possibilities with an angle grinder and i'm sure i and many other metal workers surely wouldn't be without one plasma cutter one of the tools i would not be without it gets used daily a plasma, like a grinder, can cut almost any material granted you have a high enough amp setting, or a really good plasma, like an Oxford or a Hypothern, which despite its amp setting will allow you to cut thicker material, heat up or gouge. I don't have that luxury, but I wouldn't be without my little SIP HG400 for the work I do. It's crucial. It allows you to save on materials, in my opinion cheaper on consumables than cutting wheels. It allows you to cut quick and clean, allows you to get into them tight cuts, like if you just want to cut a tight circle, pierce for a plug weld, or even letters out of sheet metal. Anything you need, a plasma cutter makes quick work of. They're very versatile and really make cutting quick and simple. Grinding a 2x72 belt grinder is an important bit of kit in my shop. You don't need a 2x72 or a grinder of that size, just what suits me. A 1x30 or a 2x48 are just as useful. For a while I even used a woodworking belt sander with a zirconia belt and it did me just fine. But I did need something a bit more heavy duty so just keep that in mind if you're in the market for a belt grinder. The belt grinder is used for shaping metal to desired shapes. Grinding dross and plasma cutting, finishing the shaping on a piece of steel, grinding in bevels ready for welding, grinding mill scale off back to a shiny weldable surface, polishing with high grip belts, grinding bevels on tungstens, grinding knives, regrinding your chisel or hardy. You'll find everything in the shop will go past your belt grinder for a clean up prior to welding, even sharpening your pencil or soapstone. Although don't worry a lot of this you can do with a grinder and grinding wheel or flap disc. A grinder can do more in respects of accuracy, repeatability and versatility in this department but don't panic. If you're just starting an angle grinder will do the trick. Cleaning. A cold chisel, believe it or not is a piece of steel that can save so much money. Simply made from a piece of coil or even O1 or WT tool steels then hardened and tempered. This tool can cut steel or other materials softer than itself, mark, crease, ready to fold, fuller when paired with a bottom fuller, knock dross off after a plasma cut, removing old bolts, making grooves, even removing waste between cracks. This simple tool really has its place in any toolbox and deserves a place in this top 15. Drilling. A centre punch or drill is critical to any job, from vehicle mechanics to machinists to the backyard hobbyists and all in between. We all need an accurate hole drilled and without it, unless you have a mill and an awfully steep bevel on your drill bit, it's going to go for a walk, but still good practice too. They can be used for making a hole ready for a lathe centre or even used to punch the hole on the amateur bar then secure the amateur bar tips to the amateur bar on a tattoo iron. The drill press, milling machine or handheld drill, all have the same use in the shop. 
Mill being more accurate, especially with the help of a DRO, but regardless, they all pretty much have the same use to drill a hole in whatever material you're using. Holes are a crucial part to almost any project, and almost all aspects of metalworking, from plugging, to mortising, to bolt holes, picket holes, drilling out rivets, and many more that I just don't know about. The drill is one handy tool. Welding. Whether you're going oxy-fuel welding, MIG, TIG, ARC, fusion or even spot welding or maybe just what the job requires a welder is one of the most useful tools you can have this machine will allow you to join metal together with just heat or filler material this is used all throughout metal working from making gates railings stair rails to automotive plane parts space rocket parts joining pieces of custom ironwork sculpting fabricating buildings and even extending pieces of steel aluminum titanium lead and many other metals or you could even just start a car, or unless you don't have anything else to light a cigarette, use the bead. The limits with a welder of any sorts are endless. A welder is almost useless without a welding helmet, or a shade of some sort. No, sunglasses do not work well. Well, unless you want your eyesight or not to feel like you have sand in there anyway. You can get many different hoods, thick shades, or oh, darkening with all the bells and whistles, even some with LCDs telling you what shades, some with true vision, which really makes a difference. No matter what you go with, cheap or expensive, you need to be able to see what you're doing to be able to work. Personally, I'd say go for the best one you can within your budget. Vice, or vice grips, or clamps, all part of the same category for the sake of this video, are used for holding down, holding square, squeezing metal together while you tap pieces up, Grip and hold while you shape, cut, bend or file the material to your required shape and size. It can also be used to hold a blade or stock while you sand and polish. And to grip bolts while you're either tightening or loosening them. These are just some of the uses for clamping equipment. Shaping. The anvil, the workhorse of any blacksmith's shop. But it doesn't mean it's just using blacksmithing. Sure you can forge steel on it, but it's used to manipulate almost any metal, used in automotive, tin smithing, silver smithing, sculpting, sheet metal workers, farriers, just to name a few occupation, even DIYers. And there's a good reason. The face can be used to straighten out, draw out, the corners can be used to bend, scroll, set down and mark. The table can be used to cut, the set down between the table and the face can be used to shape, and the bit can be used to bend, scroll and draw out. Most custom metal shops will benefit from an anvil, whether you work hot or cold stock. You'll find yourself using it more and more, and having numerous uses for it. Squaring up. A square is the heart to making almost anything. You want a desk? You can't make it wonky. It won't look right, or function as a desk. If you put anything on it, it will fall over, or lean forward and backwards at a minimum. Squares can almost help give you the correct angle and give you a straight reference to score a line with prior to cutting or welding. Some even give measurements. You want to make a cut square? Set your fences on your saws to your square in both directions making sure you get that perfect 90. Then when welding up, use a square to make sure everything lines up to one another. Definitely a tool for every workshop. Measuring. Whatever you do in metal work, you need to measure, whether that's with a ruler or a tape measure. You need to know what size you need to cut to, measure the distance over, or check for squareness. Even measure round curves and check for measurements ready to figure out angles. The tape measuring is an essential piece of kit, whether you build a gate or check the size of what you fit into, unless you have some kind of ability to get it dead on, you're going to need a tape measure. Leveling. Spirit levels within metalworking are used mostly on site, or they are in my experience making sure a table, bed, shelf, cabinet or gate is level in both ways within my use but also used within carpentry, bricklaying, foundation work, plumbers and many other different trades. Calculating. A calculator on your phone or an actual calculator, either one works. Or if you want to get even more accurate, pick up a construction calculator, which is specifically made for figuring out angles on your joists, posts, rails, legs, or figuring out birds' mouths on your rafters, or spacing between different sections. No matter what you're doing on any project, we all need to add up, or minus, or figure out where to mark, cut, or drill. Marking. This logo is one. There is a lot of different marking tools, from scribes to chasing wheels, chalk to even soapstone, but we're talking about pens, marker pens and pencils. But all down as one tool, as if I was going to list them all, it wouldn't be 15. So here goes, yet yeah, another universal tool in many trades, whether it's soapstone, pencil, of any colour, marker or pen, we all need to write down measurements, reminders, 
marking where to cut, drill, bend, draw a line of where the post goes into the ground, what side is best. Draw round templates, ease a new stub and key into a lock, draw a line to find your high or low spots, or just clean your muddy shoes. There is millions of uses for a pencil in the workshop. I did leave out such things like pliers, compressors, tongs, chipping hammers, workbench, files, drill bits, cutting oil, tap and die sets and storage, and other things you need. I use these daily, they're important, but I only had 15. And I do recommend getting these, but I just went what I thought would be a good option for someone who's interested or someone setting up shop who already has the basics. Did you like my picks? Did I miss something? Tell me in the comments. A tool? A bit of information I'm missing? Let me know. And also, let me know what you thought of my choices. Do you use them the same way? Do you use something else? Let people know what you use mostly and how it helps you. So guys, I hope you all enjoyed that video. That's 15 tools that... I won't be without. Of course I've left out things like I said like my air compressor and workbenches and stuff like that because I think that's something you get when, you, when you're just starting whether it's small or big or whatever it is. I think it's just something you have when you first start. So I hope you all enjoyed my picks. Tell me what you think in the description. Is this something I've missed out? Is this something you choose that I haven't chose? Let me know. So in the description they will be links to social media, previous and next videos, playlists, my main channel where I do all the projects and everything. So check it all out in the description. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.